You can't fight City Hall is a way of saying you can't win against big government. Well, three years ago, we brought you the story of one man who tried. Eddie Haymore took a... Boy, there goes Beirut. <laughs> <laughs> this time, it's only a joke. It's Labor Day weekend, 1986. Today, Haymore is through with fighting. There's a party on the island. Friends and relatives have been invited to eat hummus and shish kebab and to dance the dab key. They also reminisce about what might have been. But you didn't build the whole camel. The camel no. never well, they just uh, his legs and his ass. <laughs> his ass. <laughs> Eddie's celebrating. This summer, a British Columbia Supreme Court judge said Eddie had been right all along. The government had taken his island unfairly. And although he didn't get the island back, the judge ordered the government to pay Haymore over $200,000 in compensation. I was acknowledged in court. Oh. In his decision, Kinnan used some pretty strong language. He found that senior officials in the social credit government, including the then Premier W.A.C. Bennett, plotted to stop Eddie Haymore. They refused to consider his applications. They discriminated against him by suddenly changing the rules. They drove him to the brink, financially and emotionally. And commenting on past expert testimony claiming Haymore was paranoid, Justice McKinnon concluded he had every right to be. The government was, in fact, persecuting Eddie Haymore. 15 years of people calling you names, calling you crazy, calling you a, a, a two-bit hustler, calling you all kinds of names. Finally, they said, Haymore is right. That's got to be... Thank goodness. <laughs> Thank that has goodness. to be an incredible relief for you. It, it's big load. I'm a strong now, a thousand times stronger. Because I don't have to worry about convince you or convince anyone in this world that I was right. It's hard to Vancouver understand. lawyer Jack Cram represented Haymore. Well, it's a classic case of, of confrontation between... One, the abuse of political and bureaucratic power in this province, and two, the person standing up for his rights. The judge said that the government's actions were highly improper, even cruel. They started the bureaucratic steamroller, and they just kept rolling until he was driven insane, put in jail, and then in a mental hospital. You don't want to believe that that could happen to an individual? Not in our society. And I doubt there's uh, many societies in the world today that that would happen. I mean, I, I just, I mean, if it wasn't true, uh, if it hadn't been so well proven, uh, you just couldn't imagine it happening. Today, with his new family, those events seem very far away. <laughs> but 13 years of anguish and degradation have not stopped Haymore. He has new plans for Rattlesnake Island. It's a like Middle there. Eastern version of Victoria's famous Bouchard Gardens. More than a park, it'll be an island cemetery, a final resting place for Haymore and his dreams. I know about Eddie Haymore's, and Eddie Haymore's dream is not unrealistic. It's, it's to have a tourist attraction was unrealistic, to have a graveyard and, and a Bouchard Garden type, to have the people visit you before you die and after, that's not unrealistic. It's... Uh, but first, he must get the island back. Haymore and his lawyer have asked the British Columbia government to appoint an independent commission to look at the case. So far, they have not heard from Premier van der Zam. After 15 years, the story of Eddie's island isn't over yet. My island must come back to me. I bought it in a, a proper and a legal way. They took it in a cruel and ugly way. And I must give it back. Aren't you tired? Fifteen years, they tell you now, okay, you're right, here's some compensation. Don't you, in your heart, want to, want to leave it alone? Give me my island, give me my money, apologize, I'll leave you alone. 